Welcome to In Touch, dedicated to real estate professionals worldwide. We're here to educate you, entertain you, and empower you in all facets of real estate. Are you ready for the latest news, trends, and market updates? Then it's time to get in touch. Welcome to our training on long-term success. Today I am joined by Mindy Landry and John Winshuffle. I am so pleased to have both of you here. We are going to be talking about long-term success and how to grow your business exponentially. From two individuals that combined have, what, over 75 years of experience? <laughs> Mindy, over 40 years, and John, over 30 years. Um, to clarify, John has been a salesperson and been on the phones, marketing, door-to-door -door sales, every type of sales you can imagine for over 30 years. He is not a real estate agent, and I wanted somebody up here that was not a real estate agent that could just talk to the longevity of a salesperson. How do you get through the thick and thin for over 30 years? And Mindy, who is a well-established real estate agent, has been in the business again for over 40 years. So you are about to get incredible wisdom. They're gonna share their stories, how they did what they did, their trials, their tribulations, and everything in between. So we're gonna get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read out each section. I'm gonna pose three or four questions. You don't have to answer them all. Remember to speak into the microphone and to share the microphone. So we'll start with you, Mindy, yeah. and then when you're done, just pass the mic over to, to okay. John and, and he'll share. But we're just going to start with history, your history, and give the audience a little bit of context, all right? So I want you to introduce yourself, and I, I want to know when did you start your sales career? Where did you start your sales career? What led you into the real estate industry or the sales industry? why you're still in sales, and how do you keep selling after all of these years? So, Mindy? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I started in 76. I started in San Gabriel Valley, which is up in LA, and what led me into real estate is really funny. I think I was very cocky to think this, and I still think I am very cocky sometimes. <laughs> I have to stay in check on that. I bought my first property. I was 24. During the process with no faxes, no pagers, no cell phones, nothing. You wanted to negotiate, it was walk and drive back and forth for the realtor. And I negotiated over $300 to 115 in the morning. <laughs> I got my price that I wanted, but at the end of that process, I was really exhausted, but I realized I wanted to do my realtor's job. And what the cocky part is, is I thought I could be a better realtor than him. <laughs> so why am I in sales? Why? I don't sell anything, and that is really how I look at my job in this field. It's called sales. But think about it. We advise, we counsel, we listen carefully to a person's needs and wishes. We know the market, the economic climate, and make suggestions as to a direction that the client may want to go. And we do our best to facilitate their decisions, whether it means a sale or not. And that's how I feel about what I do. Why do I keep selling? Believe me, I've been through burnout four times. It's by the sheer will of God that I still sell. I have prayed to God many times to let me out of the field. <laughs> Please, God, show me something different. Help the girl. Mercy. It's brutal, isn't it? It can be brutal, right? Well, unequivocally, the answers have been no, Mindy, no. And this is why. The public needs an honest, ethical, professional agent that cares. They're vulnerable. I love people. I care about people. I believe they're vulnerable in our real estate market, and I do my dead level best to keep them out of harm's way. He knows it. 
He gives me the strength to endure the vicissitudes of this career and the desire to help just one more. Like Andrew Garfield, the actor who portrayed Desmond Doss in the movie Hacksaw Ridge. Do some of you know that movie? Okay. He was a medic who refused to carry a gun. He was a conscientious objector, but he wanted to help save people on the battlefield. And by the grace of God, he got there. He saved many soldiers. And he prayed to God to help him get just one more. My prayer is to help just one more, not for my paycheck, but to help them safely on a very serious and vulnerable financial journey that affects their life, their plans, their dreams, and their well-being. We're ambassadors, and it's a privilege. Very well said, Mindy. Now, John, you have a different perspective. You have a unique perspective because you don't have a real estate license. And that allows you to look at the industry through a different lens. It allows you to help encourage people on the basics, right? The basics, not the transactional stuff or the escrows, but the basics, sales 101. So let's, again, I'll repeat those questions. When did you start? Where did you start? What led you to the sales industry? Why are you in sales and how and why do you keep selling after all these years? Okay. Well, number one, it's an absolute honor to be asked to be up here, and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> I want to share some good insights with you, I hope. So, as the communications director for AARE, that's what I am, um, reflecting back on my career, believe it or not, I started my little sales career two years after Mindy started hers. I started mine in 78. Wow as a paper boy. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was a great paper boy, by the way. I was. I was on the honor roll. And it actually taught me the basics in a, in a unique way. They don't even have paper boys anymore, I don't think. Um, but it taught me the basics, literally, of customer service. I had to deliver those papers, and it was a commitment. And as a paper boy, I, I did the evening paper with the Union Tribune. But on Sundays, you had to get up at 3 in the morning yeah. and deliver the morning paper and stuff all those inserts and all that good stuff. But I learned how to deal with people at that age. I learned how to collect. I had to knock on your door. And if they didn't pay me, man, I hunted you down. <laughs> and then if they wouldn't deal with me, I had to sick my manager on them. So I learned the basics of customer service at 11 years old. And I went on to do many unique things during that time as a young person, but I really, really started my sales career at 19 years old. And I started in a very despised industry by a lot of you. I was a uh, cold caller. <laughs> and I booked them cold. I was booking timeshare presentations. Oh. Ooh, dirty word. <laughs> For Glen Ivy Resorts. Now, that's where I cut my teeth, and let me tell you something. That is a beat-up world right there. <laughs> that's where I got my skin, and I do have a skin uh, in this industry from all these years. Um, what led me to the real estate industry is kind of interesting. Um, that door opened for me in 1997. I was approached a couple times by a family member, brother-in-law, that had a really great idea. And we were in the right place at the right time. We were the first to come up with the idea of advertising a realtor, with a bio um, and a listing at that time on one page <laughs> on the internet with a website. We were pioneers in the website industry. And that was an opportunity that I'm glad, uh, it took him a couple times to get me because I was doing some other things in a, in a network marketing industry. And finally, I, I listened and I heard him out. And so I ended up becoming a founding member for Real Estate Village. Now, you may not know that name. Andrew knows that name. That's where I met Andrew. That's a very unique story that I've shared with many of you individually. But um, I ended up becoming, you know, again, a founding member uh, for Real Estate Village in 1997, which became Homes.com. What happened was Homes.com basically put their logo on my company. 
That's what happened. And I was also a founding member for another company some of you may have heard of called Home Junction. Don't know if you've heard of them. And that was back in 2008 or 9. So I was a founding member for both of those. That's how I got my start in dealing with realtors. So I'm an individual starting in 1997 that has called every brand name you can tell me. I have talked to the biggest names in real estate multiple times from coast to coast. So I work in the real estate related services. That's what I do. And that's how I came to know Andrew. And through a 20 year relationship, 20 years, Andrew was my poster boy for Real Estate Village. Yep. And it's a unique story there, but God moved on my heart for a young man that approached me trying to barter with me. Negotiate. It's a funny thing. Let me yeah. tell him real fast. The two minute version. Okay, the two yeah. minute version. <laughs> I'm walking out this, I have 300 employees. We got a big deal going on. I'm walking out my out of the office. A little context. A little <laughs> okay. context here because it gets better. Okay? Yeah, it gets real good. Imagine this, all right? <laughs> so in 1999 or 98, I'm not sure. In 19, late 1998. Okay. In 1998, I go down to Sorrento Valley. I'm sporting a ponytail we by both the time. Had one. Okay. I'm sporting a ponytail, first of all. <laughs> and a cheap suit. So you already see where this is going, right? He didn't he didn't have the suit on, guys, it was a plaid shirt. There it is. Okay. <laughs> a ponytail and a plaid yeah. I go down to Sorrento Valley sporting a ponytail and a plaid shirt. And my goal was to negotiate a free website, because I didn't have the money. But I knew the internet was the future. And this is nineteen ninety eight. This is before everybody was getting online. So I heard about these guys, Real Estate Village, and how successful they had become. And Homes.com was looking at buying them for millions of dollars. It was all so exciting. And I just went in there. I went in there and said, I'm going to try to negotiate a website for free and in return do some marketing for them. So I'm going to let John tell yes. the story from here. So there's it's the pretty context. Funny. So I'm coming out of our kitchen. I'm walking to the bathroom down the hallway. And up comes around the corner, real quick, this kid, long-haired ponytail kid. <laughs> he starts walking up down the hallway. I'm walking up to him, and he says, hey. Actually, I said to him, I think I said, hey, can I help you? And he said, yeah. Is this real estate village? I said, it is. How can I help you? And it was the funniest thing. He says, he says we had a poster man at that time. His name was uh, uh, Kevin Underdahl. Yes. And we loved Kevin. But... Something happened when I met Andrew. And I know what it is. I know very well what it is. It was the Holy Spirit. Being very receptive at that time in my walk with the Lord. And God moved on my heart. But here's what he did. This, I don't even know what's on this piece of paper still today. He, I'm not kidding you. He had some bright, I don't know if it's bright orange, like safety color orange or something. And he has this. A-A-R-E orange. Yeah, that was it. That's where we started. <laughs> That was it, actually. He has this piece of paper. He literally clutches it to his chest. Now, it's not by accident he ran into only me. And he, cl he clutches this piece of paper and he says, he said, um, I'd like to barter with you. I'd like to talk to you about bartering to get a free website. And I have in my possession <laughs> some proprietary information that I feel could radically change your business. <laughs> now... I think I was like 20. No, he wasn't 20, 19. guys. He had just barely turned 19. And I'm 28 or 29. And so I was so moved by it that something just talked to my spirit and said, you got to do this. So I went back to my brother-in-law and I said, I got this kid out here. He, he was a kid. Yeah. And I got this kid out here and he knows Kevin. He works for Kevin and his buyer's agent. He's out here bartering me for a free website. <laughs> I said, but guys, listen to me. I got an idea. Now, I knew Ke Kevin was great. He was older. He was getting ready to retire. And when I saw Andrew, I thought, whoa, that's the future. That's the one. Mm -hmm. So I go back to my brother-in-law's. They say, beat it. We're not giving anyone a free website. And I said, no, you got to hear me out. I have a feeling about this. So they heard me out. And they said, okay, you want to give him a free website? That's your responsibility. Go give it to him. Now walk him around the room and tell him what we're about to do to him. Uh-oh. So we had three offices at that time. There were uh, a total of 138 telemarketers between the offices on the phone. So I said, okay, Andrew, you want a free website? I'm going to give you a free website. I'll make you famous. I'm going to get you a URL, andrewroy.com. I'm going to put it over this website, and you're going to have 138 telemarketers doing 11 pitches a day repping andrewroy.com. 
I will make you famous. You're going to get blown up. Can you handle that? And he did. And that began the start of our relationship. And it has been the most amazing thing I've ever seen because I did him a very unique blessing. It was God. And over the years, I have had a, a, a thousand-fold return in my relationship with this man. So it's just interesting. But that's how I got tied into real estate, dealing with realtors all over the U.S. and with a very unique person. There is so much more to that story, but we have to move on. <laughs> it is hilarious. So the next part of our interview, we're going to be talking about the phases of your career, right? We all go through phases, especially if you've been in the business 30, 40 years, there's these phases. So I'm going to ask you first, Mindy. Oh boy. Please go over the phases of your career. What did you learn from those phases? reflecting on those phases and lessons learned, what do you value most about your work and career at this phase in your career, and why? Uh, if you've ever had a mid-career crisis or setback that made you think about getting out of sales, and what kept you going, and how do you get through tough times like that? Oh boy. Also, any real estate market you know, cyclical or independent sales industry kind of transient turnover issues that you've been through, ups and downs, recessions, expansions. How do you find stability in such a volatile market? And finally, how does a new salesperson get started? What are the first steps when you're starting out as a new salesperson? So those are the questions. Let's start with just the phases of your career. Whoa, that was loaded. <laughs> I'm exhausted thinking about the phases I've been through for 42 years. It started where I followed my broker around, the one that was you know, not as good as I could be. I followed him around for six months. I followed him like a puppy. When he quacked, I quacked. And I, six months I did that, and I learned and listened and watched and and when he needed help, I did what he told me. It was, yes, sir, how high do I jump? And I learned hands-on from a guru who had ethics and morals. Let us not forget that. Um, my career started with a full week of training with ethics at the Board of Realtors. You couldn't be a realtor unless you went through the ethics training. And therein is the foundation of my career, which, as you know, is my hot button. So the foundation was poured. Six months was poured into me by the broker who I thought was a duck and that I could be better than. By the way, he's in his 70s, he's still practicing, and we're still in touch with each other. That's how much of a better agent I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, how cocky am I? So, um, how did I get started and how should a new agent get started? get started? Well, it's like this. You gotta talk to people. And there's many ways to communicate with people, but I'm, can you tell, a social animal. I'm a belly-to-belly, upfront and personal kind of gal. I'm very interested in who you are and what's important to you. So I can strike up a conversation with a snail on the sidewalk, really. I mean, I, I'm just interested in people. And I think being interested instead of interesting is important. So I started my business at my son's baseball games. I named several of them. Um, roller skating, when they went roller skating, I was hobnobbing with the parents, just talking. It's just talking. Uh, well, I just went to the doctor's office the other day and I gave him one of our new magazines. So that's how I do what I do. But new persons coming in with all the internet and all the technology that we have, some people are not going to be like me. They're going to want to do it with text and Facebook and internet and all kinds of different ways to communicate. Just make sure a new agent should start with many different ways of communicating, not just one not just one. So the phases that I went through in real estate are two pages long and I won't go through that because there's some more important things I want to get to. But remember, I didn't have pagers, cell phones, internet, none of that. It was all hand carry documents. It was one page of a contract. 
halfly printed, the other half you actually wrote your own verbiage. So you were practicing law without a degree. <laughs> We pre-approved our own buyers. We did not uh, have lenders in those days. And we filled out the loan application when escrow started or when we had a transaction get put together. We had the loan application that we filled out with the client and hand carried in it into any bank, any bank. Didn't matter, choose your poison. And there was only three loans, FHA, VA, and 20% down conventional, that's it. Well, that's how I started real estate. And did I work till one or two or three in the morning to put a transaction together? Yeah, I was on the streets. So when people asked me what I did for a living, I told them I walked the streets. Because <laughs> I did. <laughs> what did I learn from the field? And this is where Robert Sizer comes to mind as I went through the last two nights with these notes. Educate, educate, educate. Know statistics, know the market, know the days on the market, list a sale price, provide value. That sets me apart from other realtors. Pick and choose who I work with and what I work on. You will learn that through the hard knocks of real estate for those of you that have been in five years or less. You have to say no sometimes to some people. They'll suck you dry. Um, and we're in business, time is money, and that's why you're gonna make those decisions ultimately. Did I ever have a midlife crisis? <laughs> Four times, and I will tell you. <laughs> that's when I had talks with God. Hey, dude, up there, you know? I need some help, help the girl. Please open the doors for something else. Please open the doors for something else. And God would say, no, mm -mm, nope, because, Mindy, you're honest and ethical and professional. And I've told you that story, but it's true. And because of that, he's the one that brought me to it. He's the one that gets me through it. It is God that got me through midlife crises, but I learned. I had to have light at the end of the tunnel. Andrew went through all this with you. I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> I have to have light at the end of my tunnels, and I have learned to balance my life, my Family, my kids are important. I was raising them as a single mom many times, and I had to know that I had time to carve out to be with them and go on vacation was very important to me. It's the only time I could disconnect. Only time I could disconnect. To this day, it's the only time I can disconnect when I delegate my business to my assistant and my transaction coordinator and other agents that are so precious enough to share their valuable time to help run my business when I'm gone. And I'm usually asking for two or three people to do that so nobody goes on burnout. And that's how I manage my business. I have light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, burnout's important. Cyclical. Yep, it's cyclical. I've been through four cycles. I've gone through 18 to 21 percent, wraparound mortgages, creative financing. I've gone through times and periods, and Robert, you'll attest when VA transactions, the appraisal could take up to six months. I've gone through two short sale markets. I prayed to God after the first one, I'd never go through another one, and I'd quit if it happened again, and I went through it again. And I didn't get to quit, because God said no. But the first time we went through short sales, there weren't computers, there weren't those processes on the computer, and it hadn't been fined and rehoned. Well, the second time, now the banks were getting with it a little better, and they had better systems, and we had the internet, and we had places we could go inside the internet for that. So I've been through the short sale markets and all of those ups and downs, but what's the bottom line, Robert? You're gonna say yes. Educate, 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 know your, know your statistics, know the market, know the economic climate of the market, make sure you're getting good, solid financial advice so you can impart that to your clients. Because the bottom line is it doesn't matter if you make a sale. Bottom line is what are you doing for your customer that's right? 